Welcome to Paranormal Universe. Hello and welcome back to Paranormal Universe. I'm Chris. And I'm Tina. And this is episode five. <laughs> what are you looking at me like that for? You just cut me very short. That's why. <laughs> I barely finished my name and you were <laughs> you were saying it was episode five. <laughs> like you were on top of the A on, at the end of my name. And you started the E. The E was like, here's the A on the end of my name and here's your E. It was no space between the two words. <laughs> okay, so we have a double header for you today. We have two stories from uh, one person. Uh, this person's name is uh, Nautico Venom. And the story is uh, called it, it Wasn't My Grandmother. I live in a small one-story home in the country surrounded by acres of pasture and woodland. Although we have neighbors, we aren't close with them. We hardly have visitors of any kind. To say I haven't experienced anything odd or interesting during my lifetime living here would be a lie. I could write a book with the amount of stories I have involving bizarre creatures I've seen roaming the grassy fields around the pond behind our house at night. I've been sensitive to the paranormal since I was a baby, and the experiences run in my family on my mother's side. With this being said, I scare easily. I'm a huge baby when it comes to anything out of the ordinary, so I've had to teach myself to turn it on and off, so to speak. This particular story, however, takes place long before I learned how to do it. Around 10 years ago, my grandmother, who lived with us, passed away. I was very close to her, so I took the hit hard. Around this time, the paranormal activity in my household began to ramp up. Toys would turn on and off without anyone or anything near them. We would occasionally feel something tap on our shoulders, and my brother, who moved into her old room a few months later, even distinctly remembers a warm breath on the back of his neck when he was alone in the house. We were all rather calm about it, as we believe it was my grandmother hanging around to help ease us into the transition of life without her. I never felt scared or in danger. That is, until one night. I'm a very light sleeper. I inherited that from my mom as well. The slightest sound of the air conditioner turning on at night, and I was always wide awake. This time, however, I awoke to the sound of the floor creaking outside my room. The way my house is laid out, my room, my aunt's room, and my brother's, formerly grandmother's, room were all at the far end of the house. One has to walk the entirety of the house from my room through the dining room, kitchen, and living room to get to my parents' bedroom at the opposite end of the house. I looked at the clock and realized it was a little past midnight. No one would be awake at this time. The creaking wasn't uncommon, however. We had a few weak spots in the dining room and kitchen that would creak occasionally, even if no one was stepping there. Just as I was about to fall asleep again, I heard a second creak further into the dining room. Again, odd, but not entirely unbelievable. It was until the third creak came just outside the kitchen that I realized it sounded like very slow footsteps deliberately stepping on every weak place in the floor. Man, <laughs> that's creepy, man. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's a ghost just like tapping on all the weak spots. <laughs> I sat up to listen closer. As I did so, I heard three more very distinct creaks coming back to the door of my room. They stopped directly outside my door and then began to pace back and forth in the direction of the kitchen once again. I listened to this repetition for 15 minutes or so, memorizing each of the steps until I was unable to predict when and where the next step would sound. It was bizarre, but even my little 10-year-old brain tried to reason that it was just the house settling or an issue with air conditioning or something like that. But I said earlier, I scared easily, especially in the dark of night. So I quietly slid out of bed and was planning to make a run for my parents' room. The only problem was that I had to run through the kitchen in order to get there, where the creaking was currently coming from. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> That's a long distance. Yo, I'd close my eyes and just go. <laughs> That's like running through the, the coals, the hot coals. <laughs> I close my eyes. I mean, there's no way she this person hasn't memorized their parents' house. I, I I'd have to memorize. I you you know what you're gonna run into. Just run with your eyes closed. 
I stilled my nerves and opened my bedroom door, quietly stepping into the rest of the house. The lights were off, but there was no one in the dining room. Just as I was about to start my wild run to my parents' room, (laughs) I realized the next predicted step didn't come. Instead, I became aware of a much more terrifying sound. Running. Something was running at me from the kitchen through the dining room. Yo. Oh, my. (laughs) Hold up, man. No. You know what I'm thinking about? I'm thinking about that scene in It too, when the old lady's like naked in that house with Beverly. (laughs) And she runs at her naked. And remember that? She's like in the dark and she just comes running. Yes. Yo, that's what I'm thinking about right now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's truly terrifying. Okay, let me pick up. So there was no one there, but I could hear it so distinctly. I panicked and ran back into my room and the footsteps right behind with the footsteps right behind me. I jumped into bed and covered myself with a blanket, and the fast footsteps came all the way into my room and right to my bedside where they stopped. And they stopped. I didn't hear them again the rest of the night or the following night. In fact, to this day, it's the only night anything in my house has ever made that kind of sound, and I still have no explanation for it. All I know is whatever chased me through my home that night, it wasn't the spirit of my kind grandmother. No, it was not. I don't know what that was. That's scary. Why is the blanket always our go-to? I don't know. (laughs) It's like you can trap yourself in there. What if, like, you get under your blankets and something just starts pounding on your blanket? You don't know what it is. You don't know who's there. You don't know if somebody's messing with you or if it's really a spirit. Or if it, like, balls you up in the blanket. (laughs) You're trapped under the blanket and then you're, like, fighting to get out. That's a terrifying scenario. I'm getting anxiety just thinking about it. You're in there nervous and hot boxing <laughs> yourself and all you're kind of stuff. Out. And you're you that that's always our go-to as as people <laughs> when it comes to scary hide things like ghosts. Blanket. And we hide under the blanket and we start doing that at a young age. I mean, even in what movie was that? Was it Jurassic? park the little girl when that they had that dinosaur that they that they mutated and it was it went out the window and around the the house and that little girl went and got in her bed and got under the blanket remember that oh you're talking about the the second jurassic park when the t-rex was in the backyard and she got under the blanket where they uh mutated the dinosaurs and made that that super uh, dinosaur. Oh, yeah, in yeah. the last Jurassic Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That when wasn't they were, even a ghost. When, when the dinosaurs were in the house. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't even yeah, a ghost. She and she went and got under the blanket. Yeah. And it's like, hey, now. No, no, you no. You just trapped yourself. <laughs> you so, can't get out now. I, I don't know why when we're kids, we think that that's a safe place to go. <laughs> it's not. It's <laughs> no. not. Yeah, it's not. It's like being chased by a serial killer and running down a dark alley. There's no way out because nine times out of ten, for some reason, that alley is a dead end. You can't, you're not getting out. You just trapped yourself. I, I don't know. I would have took my chances <laughs> running on over there to mom and dad's room. Yeah, I would have, I would have just, I would have had to do some, 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 sh- some nice footwork. Would have been like those, remember those no old Nike basketball commercials with dribbling? I would have just pretend, pretended like I was in one of those commercials. <laughs> yeah, I would have done a nice little crossover move. That thing's not catching me. Speaking of. I wonder if they closed that bedroom door before they getting under that they blanket. Didn't. You wanna know why they didn't? Because the thing came right in. They didn't. So they didn't close mm, the door. I wonder if they had closed that door, would it have stopped anything? It would have. Mm. It would have. I bet. Because I closed bet doors is that that's the way to go. You sleep with your bedroom door closed. I'm not budging on that. No. I'm not budging on it. Close your bedroom door, you're safer that way. Okay, okay. One of our listeners is going to send in a story that's going to prove you wrong. Well, they saw something walk through the door? I am going to win this. You're not going to win. I'm going to. You're not going to win. I'm going to. You're not going to win. I'm going to. You know what? Nautical Venom has been through the ringer because I have another story here from Nautical Venom called The Facility in the Woods. Okay? All right. Well, let's hear that. Let's see if any closed door saves Nautical Venom so I can prove you wrong. All right. I work in a wildlife rehabilitation center in the middle of the forest atop a hill, about 20 minutes away from the nearest streetlight. It's a beautiful property during the day, but at night, 
You can hardly see your hand in front of your face unless the moon is high enough over the trees to shed a little bit of light on the area. For privacy's sake, I won't be given the name or the location of this facility. This facility sounds pretty interesting. <laughs> sounds like one my mom worked at before. It, it's, you know, it's, it's, it sounds pretty interesting. It's a little animal facility, rehab animal facility. <laughs> Straighten their lives out. I'm just kidding. I'm over here. <laughs> <laughs> I started, Good one. <laughs> I started working here last year, usually being put on the um, closing shift, which is 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. But we typically were on property until the wee hours of the morning since the sheer number of animals in our care prevented us from going home before everything was complete. The facility itself is deeply haunted. Oh, no. First home, now work. Can you not have a break? I know. I've known this since a couple of weeks into my employment. One of the routes for the Trail of Tears actually went right through what is now the property, but more on this later. There are some of the stories, these are some of the stories I've collected while working here. One night, as we were all wrapping up downstairs and getting ready to shut down for the evening, the doorbell rang. It must have been around 10 p.m. by then, and we close admission by 5 usually. All of our admissions are by appointment only. These are some of the stories I've collected while working here. One night, as we were all wrapping up downstairs and getting ready to shut down for the evening, the doorbell rang. It must have been around 10 p.m. by then, and we close admission by 5 usually. All of our admissions are by appointment only, but on occasion, we'll get a walk-in. With a sigh, my coworker goes upstairs to greet the person and take the animal down for a quick examination. After a few minutes, she comes back down, empty-handed and looking a bit unsettled. Upon being asked what the problem was, she answered, there was no one at the door, and there's no other car in the lot. This has happened at least two other times. I've always been a little sensitive to the paranormal, but I'm pretty skeptical by nature. I want to first rule out any other possible scenario before jumping to the conclusion of something otherworldly. So I chalked these situations up to an electrical error. The building took on a whole new energy at night. Rooms of the facility that were well lit and normal during the day felt more ominous at night. I have never wanted to be alone inside by myself after 8.30. After 8.30, things get weird. Mostly, it's just the feeling that I'm being watched or thinking I see something out of the corner of my eye. It's all just very unsettling. As one of our interns was leaving one night, she said she heard someone calling to her from the parking lot. Psst, hey, over here. There was no one there. One of my coworkers went outside to finish up animal care in some of the outside enclosures that hadn't been done during the day and I was left alone inside to finish preparing diets for some of the raccoon babies we had inside. We had a microwave above the counter, and I'd long since gotten used to seeing my silhouette in the reflective sheen on a door. I reached up to retrieve the bowl I'd put in the microwave and shut the door once I was done, only to see the reflection of a silhouette behind mine. I whipped around so fast, I nearly dropped the bowl. No one was standing behind me, and when I looked back into the reflection, the silhouette wasn't there anymore. As I previously, as I said previously, the trail of tears ran through the property, and at least two of my coworkers have made separate comments about seeing a woman in buckskin, either walking through the hallway or standing in the laundry room. She always moves out of sight right before anyone can try to say anything to her. We have a separate little building on the property, that's now a storage unit. It once housed interns that would stay on on site overnight, but it's been long gone. It's been a long time since it's been used for that purpose. I've always gotten a weird feeling whenever I'm near it. I've never been inside, but I hope I'll never have to. Anytime I walk past it, I feel incredibly unsettled, like there's someone standing behind me or watching me. 
Several months ago, I was informed we no longer have interns living in the building because late one night, a man walked in man walked in and stood in the doorway staring at the interns while they were asleep. Since then, we've installed trail cameras and security cameras all over the property. There's a million more stories I can tell you about this place, and maybe one day I will. So far, these are the only truly truly paranormal feeling ones that I have to tell. I'll be sure to make updates in the future if anything else happens to occur. Thank you for listening to my ramblings. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's, uh, I wouldn't work there, first of all. <laughs> it's dark in the woods. I'm scared. I'm afraid of the dark. I have this irrational fear of the dark, and I refuse. I'm not. Nope. I'm good. If I have to drive into the dark woods at night... First of all, I'm afraid of trees at night. So, <laughs> so look I clear. never knew that you were afraid of trees at night. Only at night? <laughs> Only at night. I'm afraid of trees. I've known you for quite some time. <laughs> I did not know that you were afraid of trees at night. I, I knew you were terrified or irrationally terrified of the dark. Like, you know how when we were, like, driving through the mountains on the way back from Florida? I I was terrified i i don't i don't like trees at night you know we're surrounded there's like mountains and trees and i i I can't i'm afraid of trees at night whether i'm in a car or i'm out of the car when i'm out like if i walk under a tree i i'm like panicking my my pulse is, is racing and this is because i'm afraid that if i look up i'll see something creepy sitting in that tree so at night, I'm terrified of trees. Terrified. I don't walk under a tree at night. I don't like to be near trees at night. I just don't do it. I had no idea. That's why I don't take the dog to the dog park after dark. I'm not, nope. I'm not cool with that. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I totally lost train of thought after you said that. That, that blew me I'm out afraid. of the water. I'm afraid of trees at night. Don't judge me. Okay. Um, well. So, yeah, if I, if I had to work, in that, that would be a no-go. I would say there's too many trees out here. I'm not I'm not working out. And you want me to work after dark? No, ma'am. I'm afraid of the dark, and I'm afraid of trees at night. And you want me to work in the, in the woods, in, the, in a facility in the woods after dark? No, thank you. You got first shift? If so, then I'll do it. But not after dark <laughs> well there's obviously an opening shift because this person said they worked a, exactly. they usually were on the closing shift which seems like all day <laughs> 11 a.m to 9 p.m so i'm assuming there's an opening shift yeah and um, at 9 p.m they, they got to walk out to their car near the trees at night after dark unless it's summertime no um, no thank you we're not doing that okay <laughs> learn something new every day all right so i have been in a wooded area where you place your hand in front of your face and you can't see it at night um which is pretty interesting um so you 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 tend to see you know your eyes play tricks on you at that point in time um also uh it was mentioned in here about the woman in a buckskin I'm going to go back to that. The woman in the buckskin outfit. Yes, there's a woman in a buckskin outfit. And whenever someone tries to say something to her, she, like, disappears. I thought that was pretty interesting. I, w- I mean, for privacy purposes, this individual was not able to tell us exactly where this facility was. But I'm wondering if um, this was maybe... This facility was built on top of an old burial ground or maybe a, um, somewhere. Mm, somewhere. No, it's, it's on the Trail of Tears. You know the Trail of Tears is? No. Um, I don't have to Google that because I don't remember it off the top of my head, but it, it's it's got, it's, hold on. Uh, it says, there was a series of forced relocations of approximately 60,000 Native Americans in the United States from their ancestral oh. homelands in the southern United States 
to areas to the west of the Mississippi River that have been designated as Indian Territory. The forced relocations were carried out by government authorities following the passage of the Indian Removal Act in 1830. The relocated peoples suffered from exposure, disease, and starvation while en route to their new designated reserve, and approximately 4,000 died before reaching their destinations or shortly after from disease. So they basically forcibly removed them from their homes and made them, I guess, walk to wherever they were forced to live. (laughs) So that can possibly explain a woman in the buckskin? Yep. Okay. So maybe she died there on her way there on that land. Um, You know, so a lot of them died on, on the way. And then there was um, someone in the laundry room. They said that there was a a man that was watching the intern sleep at night. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I I'm hoping that that was a a ghost and not some <laughs> some creepy dude yeah. just walking into the dark facility under trees at night into the. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be bad. Uh, very, yeah. very bad. Yeah, that that's scary. Yeah, so this is pretty interesting. And this listener has several more stories from what I understand. So yeah. I'm I'm hoping I'd to like hear to, more. Uh, I'd like to hear more from Nautical Venom. Yeah, I would too, because it seems like this person has a lot of interesting stories. You you've got things going on at home, things going on at work. <laughs> yeah, you know, the I remember I used to um I worked at Duke University. Uh, in 2008 to 2009, and I worked on campus. And working there was, yeah, that's when I realized I had a fear of trees at night. <laughs> because uh, their, their west campus is, you know, there's an area, I don't know if they've changed that, but there's dorms in an, in off back in an area where there's, like, a lot of trees. And I would have to do my patrols out there by myself at 1, 2 a.m., <laughs> And it would just be dark back there. I mean, there were, you know, lights, of course, because the students had to walk back there and be safe. But it was still just kind of creepy. I was never really comfortable walking around back there. And I would, like, just, you know, I'd hear stuff rumbling in the trees. And Mm -hmm. it it just gave me intense anxiety. I was terrified. I would always ask people to walk with me to do my patrol before I leave for the night. But, um, yeah, that that's, it's... It's creepy having to go to work and be like, oh, it's time to go play with the ghosts today. <laughs> <laughs> there was one instance. Uh, I was doing a patrol in one of the, in the administration building, the Allen building. And um, I was with my coworker and we were walking and uh, I had to use the bathroom. So I was like, oh, I'm going to, you know, we, we had finished walking through the entire building. We were on the bottom floor. There's the restrooms are right by the exit toward the back of the building. And he waited out inside the bathroom while I went in there and I, you know, I had to remove all my equipment. <laughs> I had a stupid belt with the radio and all that crap on. And, uh, as I finished, I'm getting done and I hear the bathroom door, uh, open and close. And, and I'm like, okay, he's coming in here, but I don't hear anybody walking in there. I don't hear any footsteps and his radio is loud and we can hear, you know, people talking on the radio, but only my radio is the only sound that you can hear. And then I see a dark shadow just go past in the cracks of the right. of the stall. And I'm like, Sean? <laughs> and he didn't answer. I'm like, Sean? <laughs> and he he didn't answer. So I hurry up and I'm getting everything back on. I'm tucking my shirt back in, getting my belt and everything. And I run out and I look around. There's nobody in there. Bathroom door didn't open or close again. Like, you know, if he came in, he had to come out, but he it didn't do it the second time and I go wash my hands and I run out there and he's sitting on a bench looking at me and I'm like dude were you just in the bathroom (laughs) he was like no why would I go in the bathroom he's like no I wasn't in there I said did somebody just come in here he said no I've been sitting out here the whole time I said somebody was just in the bathroom with me that door just opened and closed and the bench he was sitting on was like right across from the door. He was looking right at the door the whole time. Uh He said, that door didn't open. I said, the door opened and closed. (laughs) And I saw someone walk past. And the thing was, they were walking toward 
the there is two two stalls in that bathroom. They're walking toward the window. There's a window at the last stall, and there's no other way out. The bathroom is one way and one way. Right. They went the opposite direction of the exit. Like, they walked in the door and just went out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Creepiest thing. I it was is. like, man. So let's go. <laughs> it's time to go home anyway. I'm ready to go home. So after that, I never went in that building by myself. I was like, I'm not going in there by myself after dark. I'll do it. In the daytime, I did my patrols. I never went in there after dark ever again after that. I wouldn't have went in there during the day after that. Oh, yeah, and in and, and that building, like, once it's closed, the students don't have access to it because it's an administration building. And the lights are usually all off. Mm -hmm. So when you go in there after dark, the lights are off in the building. So you go in there and you just got to... <laughs> right. The only lights that are in there are, like, the emergency, you know, little exit signs and stuff like that. But, yeah, it's dark in there. Mm-hmm. So that was, I, I wouldn't, I didn't like working somewhere where I had to worry about being scared. Uh, there was another instance where we, me and Sean, we were also doing a uh, walkthrough of the library. When the library's closed, we had to go through and make sure everybody was gone. So there was two, there were two libraries and they were connected uh, through like this walkway. There were two separate buildings, but there was like one walk at, walkway up high that connected them. And if you go to that floor, you walk from one library to the other. And we were both walking through, we're, you know, making everybody leave and everything. And um, he's on his side and I finished doing mine. And uh, we, we usually meet up in that walkway. And I was in the walkway and he's like standing near the bathrooms. And I'm like, yo, what are you doing? He said, oh, you know, I got everybody out. I'm just waiting for this guy to come out of the bathroom. He just went in the bathroom. I said, okay. So I go over there and I'm standing with him. We're standing there for a while. And I'm like, <laughs> look at him. I said, oh, <laughs> I don't want to rush him, but it's been a while. You might want to go see <laughs> see if any if he's going to wrap it up anytime soon. So he goes in there and he comes back out. His eyes are wide. And I'm like, what? He said, he come back out here? I said, no. He said, dude. There's nobody in that bathroom. He said, but I watched him go in there. I was like, well, what? He looked like he was like, he's a, he's, he was an older guy. He looked like he may have been a professor or somebody. He's like mm -hmm. an older guy with a long coat and a hat, like a fedora. I said, I haven't seen anybody come out of that bathroom. I've been sitting here the whole time with you. He's like, I watched him go into the bathroom. He goes back in there. He's looking in all the stalls. He comes back out. He's like, I swear. He said he walked in there. And that he said, I did not move when I saw him go in the bathroom. I did not move from this spot. So he was pretty freaked out about that. <laughs> I said, dude, you saw a ghost then because there's only one way in and one way out. And nobody's come out here. Those bathrooms over there, <laughs> boy, you gotta be careful over there. Haunted with those bathrooms. bathrooms, man. Yeah. So yeah, working, you know, had I, I don't know, man. Nautical Venom had some pretty cool stories. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. I like that, but <laughs> I've been in that position where I'm afraid at night and I want to go to my mom's room and I'm scared to leave my room because it's dark. <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to go what I want. I need to go in my mom's room. I, it was, I was always like, okay, not take a few deep breaths and just take off running. <laughs> well, that's good. You didn't close the door and hide under the blanket. No, I didn't do that. I was, because I was afraid back then that something would suffocate me under the blanket. I'm like, oh man, nope, we're not doing that. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna go sneak in my mom's bed. That that seemed like the safer option. Yeah, it was. It so, was. Yes. I, I would go in there, and sometimes she wouldn't. She would tell me I, to go back to my room. I would just make a pallet on the floor next to her on her side of the bed. I did that a few times. I met, I would go in my room and grab my pillow and blanket and go back in there and lay down. And she'd wake up and I'm laying on her side of the bed on the floor asleep. You were willing to risk it all. Yeah, I'm not. No, no, I'm not sleeping in my room. I'm coming back. I'll be back. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. I'm not listening to you and I'm willing to risk it all. <laughs> okay. All you right. ever had anything weird at work? Um... Well, working in, um, the, I had a group home I worked in, and um, I believe I shared that in episode one, where um, there was a hallway, and at the end of that hallway, there was a um, 
gentleman's bedroom. And it was always said that there was someone or something that was walking up and down that hall. And they said this for years before I started working there. And eventually they got a mirror. Just coincidentally, they had a decorative mirror they put in the hallway. And the way the, the mirror was positioned relative to the angle of the sofa in the living room, if you were sitting on the sofa and you looked in that mirror, you can see the shadow of a, uh, what appeared to be a person. <laughs> I mean, you can see like a little head and, and shoulders of a person every now and then move up yeah. and down that hallway. So that is one thing I did see. Um, I've worked in facilities before where it's been said that there's been people, you know, that still roam the halls that have passed away. Um things of that nature. So those are the different things that I've seen at, you know, haunts at work, so to speak. So, but I did see that shadow figure go up and down that hallway at that group home. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, so, yeah, there you have it. Uh, Episode four is, actually, no, sorry, episode five. This is episode five is a, is in the books. Thank you for listening. Um, if you guys have any experience with with any uh, strange happenings at your uh, places of employment or uh, you have any childhood uh, trauma from <laughs> strange things happening at night, please let us know. Um, thank you so much for listening. Um, we'd ask that you please... Uh, Subscribe to uh, our podcast wherever you are listening to your podcast, um, whether it's uh, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, or um, Google Podcasts. Um, yeah, uh, make sure you subscribe so you can get a notification whenever we get new episodes up. Also, please rate and uh, review us. That helps us out a lot, tremendously, actually. So please uh, make sure you give us a rating uh, review. Um and follow us on Instagram, which is uh at Paranormal Universe Podcast on Instagram and um email us um uh, at paranormaluniverse at gmail dot com. Uh email email us your stories. Um you can also DM us your stories on Instagram if you'd like, if that's just easier for you. Um yeah. Uh do you have anything to? Um, thank you for listening and please keep sending us your stories. All right, stay safe. Mm-hmm.